Okay, in case um, some of you want to use this little wire hanger for the needle, this is really tricky because this thing has to connect. And I know it's, it's hard to see. And it's kind of hard to do while I try to keep everything uh, in the frame, so. There. Okay, so the wire is connected. And how this thing works, let me take the pin out of there. This is your float. And at the end of the um, arm, there's this little um, curved area. A lot of people, what they do is they hook it up in one of these holes, and that is not how it's supposed to be. That would, um, that would not work correctly. So now if I can get it out, that would be great. The way that this works is it actually hooks right there in the middle. I don't know if I'm showing this correctly or not, but that's where the, uh, the needle hangs. And um, it actually kind of supposed to rotate from this little half moon thing. And believe it or not, it stays there. I'm gonna, I am not gonna use the uh, the hanger because there's really no need for it. I drive my car enough, so there's no, no need for it. But um, anyway, I just wanted to show you that option uh, in case you wanna use the hanger. Okay, great. I just dropped in the, um, the valve seat and the little um, washer gasket. And what I do is I start threading this in with my finger. And then with a large uh, flathead screwdriver, I center it and I just tighten the, uh, the seat. You don't want to overdo it, but just want to go slow and get it snug. And uh, that's it. And I think you can also see the uh, the, the screw head for the uh, the uh, check bolt, the um, the little bearing. Uh, that it goes in there. So uh, those two are installed now. Okay, so next I'm gonna install the, the new uh, jets. I just got these today in the mail and they are 77s. So they have to uh, go in the, uh, in the bowl. So I'm gonna do that next. It's a little tricky, so I'm not gonna film the whole process since they're just threaded and uh, you just wanna make sure that they they go in, you know, you don't wanna cross thread these things. And, uh, oh, and one thing that I wanted to mention based on what I saw in one of the videos, I like to use these type of screwdriver um, heads and um, they actually fit very nicely in here. So you don't have any chance of kind of messing up the um, the jet. The needle goes into a little hole, of course, so it's irrelevant, but still you don't want them, you don't want them to look all, all righty when they're brand new, so. Okay, let me install them. Again, I'm not gonna use the uh, needle hanger, so this point all I have to do is just drop it in place and next I'm going to um, install the uh, the float next is the spring and the uh, power piston with the two primary metering rods that goes in next 
Okay, the next step is to actually install the um, plastic liner for the, um, for the bowl. And then, followed by the uh, power piston and the primary metering rods. I did it backwards at first, but anyway. I, again, I cannot do this kind of one-handed, so I'll be back in a second. Okay, so the uh, power piston and the metering rods are in place. And I'm, next, I'm, I'm ready for the next step. Next, you want to drop in this round um, plastic cup, liner, whatever. Just go, goes in there. And next is the gasket. And again, this is tricky because you have to work around this portion of the gasket. So you have to lift it and make it go around the, uh, the power piston. And again, you know, once I start working on it, I'll use, you'll see it's the back of my hands. So there's no point in that. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and install it and I'll be back in a sec or two. I don't know if this is gonna show very well, but what I realized is that you can actually fold it like this a little bit, not totally fold it, just bend it a little bit. So this portion is, you're able to slide it underneath the, um, the needle hanger. And then you just work the, uh, the gasket around the, um, the power piston. That's a tricky area. And, um, and of course, if, if you already, and, and I guess you should, already have the, um, the choke flap arm, uh, the connector in place, you have to make sure that it fits through its, through its opening. Okay, alrighty. The next one, like everything else, I guess, is a little tricky. You wanna lift your gasket here so you can have access to the, um, to the accelerator pump um, cavity and you can drop in the spring and followed by the um, by the uh, accelerator um, pump and then just uh, <laughs> that's a little tricky but hold it in place um, and eventually the uh, the air horn is going to keep everything secured in place so that's next all right so i got this air horn to um to go back in place we have the uh the accelerator pump in place everything is looking good so next Uh, I can actually before I do the um, the flap lever what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start some of the screws around the air horn so it starts pushing everything and keeps everything in place I want it to be um, I don't want it to move I don't want to go through that part again okay, since I don't have the uh, base plate installed yet I connected one two three screws and I, now I'm gonna install the two that go in here so that's what i'm going to do next and everything is looking really really nice and next i'm going to install the choke flap lever So next is going to be the um, the diaphragm, and 
the vacuum diaphragm, the, uh, you have to, of course, connect the hose and then secure it to the side. And this fits like that. So you just secure it with the two screws. So I'm gonna do that next. So I have the uh, vacuum diaphragm installed hose, it's connected. I wrestled with it for a little bit because I couldn't install this screw and it dawned on me eventually that this part is supposed to go behind this, this little lever here. So again, you don't have to force anything to, to fit as long as you're positioning the, the parts correctly. And uh, it took me a few minutes, but uh, I figured it out. So now everything is connected properly. And of course this will, will work as intended. Okay, so next is this shield along with uh, two other screws that hold the um, air horn to the body. All right, you're making good progress here. Next is the um, secondary metering rods. We're gonna drop, drop these in, in place and secure the, um, the hanger with uh, this tiny little screw. Alrighty, so now we're gonna turn this sucker upside down and we're gonna get ready to install the, uh, the base plate. Uh, I wanted to mention also that I bought this secondary metering well super gasket. Um, it's nothing more than a little piece of foam. And this is supposed to go in here, just push it in place. And that is supposed to provide yet another way of helping plug these. Um, the, the well plugs. I have no idea because I, I put some of that um, JB Weld epoxy here. So I don't know if this is gonna actually even fit, but I'm gonna give it a shot and uh, I'll let you know. All right, so I managed to, um, to install half of the thing. What I did is I just, there was no way that I was gonna be able to, uh, to make this fit properly with the, uh, with this little, um, foam thing being twice as thick so I kind of did my best to cut it evenly in half half of it is in there and hopefully it'll help I don't think it's gonna hurt anything okay all right so next is gonna be the new fuel filter this one is shot so I don't even know how the thing works I have a new one here. This one has a valve that actually works. So you want to install the, the spring first that goes in. And you want the little valve pointing toward the uh, inlet. And we're going to tighten this sucker in. Did I cut myself? Alrighty. And in my opinion, the best way to tighten this thing, unless you have some <laughs> massive tools, is just to use a crescent wrench. Before I forget, now that the base plate is in installed, we can install these long screws. So... That's the last two ones of the nine that secure the air horn to the body of the carburetor. Again, you want to snug them good. You don't want to overdo it, but um, actually they were pretty loose when I took the carburetor off the car and I started disassembling it. I was like, what the heck? These things are loose. But anyway, don't want to overdo it, but you want these things to be nice and snug. Okay, 
And the last one is going to be the, um, the accelerator pump, um, the arm. And this one has to be um, hooked down here first. And I'm going to mess with that. And then I'm, I'm going to secure it with a, with a pin. And I'm going to have to push that one from behind. So let me do that. Alrighty, so the um, accelerator pump is installed. And that's the last item here, my checklist. Oh, no, it's a good thing to have a checklist. The last item is this threaded stud for the air cleaner assembly. So I'm going to tighten this and the carburetor is done. Cool. So if you don't want to mangle your your uh, threaded rod here, what I did is I used two nuts. I tightened them against each other and then using the top one, I can tighten this super, super tight without really scarring the uh, the stud and then what you have to do is just loosen these two and uh, you're done and with that the carb is done so I had all my my parts that I that I removed clean and, and waiting to be reinstalled. And as you can see, I don't have any leftover parts, which is a good thing. And I'm so glad that I, um, that I came up with this list. As you can see, it's a work in progress, but um, I have, I'm gonna make this available through my uh, website. 76vet.com in case one of you guys wants to um, work or rebuild or whatever uh, do something similar to what I did here to fix the uh, the well plugs if they're leaking and they probably will be so that's a wrap thanks for watching well it's back in the car and um, I think I got everything connected. Um, so there's one thing left to do. <laughs> and that's gonna be see if it see if it runs. Let's do this in real life. What the heck? No guarantees. see this is cold engine well it's probably gonna run rough at first I anyway I think the, uh, the throttle is there's something wrong here Oh yeah, the one small detail. Forgot that. Be back in a minute. <laughs> That's better. Well. We'll see what happens. <laughs>
now, of course, tomorrow what I'm going to do is I'm going to drive it, get it nice and warm, and then I'm going to park it for about 15 to 20 minutes, and uh, we'll see what happens. Right now, of course, it's not even registering here. So I'm going to start it without any, any throttle. So cool. So all I have left to do here is install the um, air, air cleaner assembly. And um, wow. I'm gonna check things, make sure that I didn't forget something, but um, seems to be running just fine. Check that out. My little cover I made looks pretty good. All righty. That is a wrap. I'm just gonna throw the, um, the air cleaner on it and uh, take a, a, a couple of pictures. Okay. Checked everything, everything checks out. So I think we're good. I don't smell a lot of gas, so that is always a good thing. Yeah, she's right at eight fifty. Water temperature is starting to come up just just a touch. So the, the real test is going to be tomorrow and uh, I'll be back with another video and report about that and uh, we'll see what happens. So far so good. At least the car runs <laughs> and everything seems to be working just fine. Not that I did a lot of things. I mean, I didn't, I didn't really, I just, um, Disassemble the thing, but the settings pretty much every everything remain um, as it was before, so that shouldn't be an issue, and it, and it is not, which is great. Alrighty, good deal. All right, guys, till tomorrow then.